Good morning, Walker Chapel and friends of the chapel. It is my joy to welcome you to this time of celebration and what we hope will be a time of refreshment and relaxation for your mind and your body and your spirit. We're excited to be together this morning. I have to tell you just a few minutes ago as I was waiting patiently for the welcome to begin and your names were being lifted up in the chat. I was thanking God for each one of you for the ways that you bless my life, gift my life in every way. And we are so hoping that you are all, each one, continuing to stay safe and healthy well. We are this morning in Chester, Virginia, right outside of Richmond, and we hope that you will enjoy this new visual this morning. Our worship team at Walker Chapel has been giving much thought to creative ways that we can offer worship time during the month of July and August. So we hope you'll stay tuned for the ways that um, the Spirit leads us um, to be outside as much as we possibly can, and also to be challenged and learn all kinds of new things as we continue to um, grow as an online community. There are a couple of notes that I have for us this morning. I want to um, remind you that uh, the Virginia Conference typically has annual conference every June. And of course, that season has passed. Uh, a new plan for annual conference in September is upon us. And the decision this past week was made that it will be virtual, which is not really a surprise to us. But I, I do wanna let you know that Friday morning at 11 o'clock. Uh, we'll be traveling to Woodlake United Methodist Church for the ordination service for this year's ordinance. Those 11 individuals that will be ordained elder and deacon. It is a very carefully, um, very carefully planned service. We'll be social distanced. Um, there will be no singing. It will be very, very different, but we're doing everything we can to be as careful as we can to plan um, and celebrate um, such a milestone in the life of these 11 individuals. So I wanted to make sure you know about it because we are live streaming this worship service at 11 o'clock, and we'll ask Derek to put this information in a chapel note so you'll have it. I will be um, the preacher for this ordination service, so that's my honor and joy, and I would invite and hope that you would give prayers for me this week as I prepare for that um, absolutely um, important um, service for those who are being ordained especially. Um, we had our first civil conversations around race this past Monday night with Dawn and Derek. And so I want to make sure that all of you, wherever you live, um, know that it's not too late to join in on these conversations. I was able to catch up on the reading for this past week, and I'm looking forward to the next time we gather, which will be a week from Monday, which I believe is July 13th. So. Um, if you receive our weekly chapel notes, uh, there'll be information about how to join. If you haven't um, gotten on our list to receive the chapel notes, I hope you'll put a note in the chat um, or call the church office and we'd be happy to make sure that you get those notes. They're full of all kinds of information, um, inside and outside happenings around the chapel as well as ways to stretch our minds. So I, I hope you'll take advantage of that. Uh, this week, I uh, watched a video where people around the world responded to the question, what is freedom? Now, the first pass responses from people all the around the world offering many different languages sounded like this. Um, the flexibility to choose your future reaching your fullest potential. What is freedom? Love. Having choices in all aspects of life. Living without judgment. Peace. Will. The right to choose your own path. The right to choose your own way. My hope this morning as we 
worship together is that each of us will reflect deeply upon the meaning of freedom. So as we prepare our hearts and our minds and our spirits for the gift of worship, I invite you to ask, what is freedom? Good morning. I'm Walter Leathers. On behalf of the staff and congregation of Walker Chapel, welcome to our online service. This morning's call to worship is based on the 11th chapter of Matthew, verses 28 and 29. And Jesus said, Come. To the light-hearted and the heavy-hearted, he said, Come. To the well-off and the cast-off, he said, Come. To the youngsters and the oldsters, he said, Come. To the faithful and the faithless, he said, Come. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Lord Jesus, let this time of worship find us resting in you as we offer this prayer. Lord, open to us the sea of your mercy and water us with full streams. From the riches of your grace and the springs of your kindness, make us children of quietness and heirs of peace. Kindle in us the fire of your love and strengthen our weakness by your power so that as we worship today, we become closer to you and closer to each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I need Good morning, children. I can see you ever so clearly in my heart. And I know that you have offered some really, really important information in the chat this morning. So I wanna take this time for us to just talk about it. First of all, I wanna say yay, woohoo on the fact that um, Catherine and Ellie learned, learned to water ski this past week at Deep Creek. Um, hope there'll be some movies that we can all watch together because that's an exciting new skill set and the promise of all kinds of great adventures because God gives us the gift of water and surely you had a great time at Deep Creek this past week. But you also got some really big news this week about Daddy-O. And it's extra big news about Daddy-O because you love him with your whole heart. So here's the thing. In life, 
sometimes we're well and sometimes we're sick. But God has created us so that we have good doctors and good caretakers and even our own body is designed with the capacity to get well. And so here's what we are called to do when we get really hard news. We center on the fact that God, our God, is a rock upon which we stand. And so leaning in to the truth that we're going to stand strong and we're going to pray mightily for daddy -o and for daddy -o's doctors and we're going to do our very best to be the strongest children and the strongest friends and the strongest church family that we can possibly be and we're going to pray and we're going to will and we're going to trust that daddy -o is going to be made well and so the news for today is that yes we feel worried and we feel we feel stressed because we don't know what's going to happen and those feelings are certainly okay too what i want you all to feel all of us is our arms wrapping around you and reminding you that we are all in this together and that we're all going to be praying and trusting and that in all things, things will be okay. I love you dearly. I wish that I could hold you for sure, for real, right this minute, but I want you to know that I love you dearly. Yesterday afternoon, we actually went a few feet from where uh, Pastor Lynn is sitting right now, and we filmed um, a children's message near the koi pond. So let's take a listen. Live. Good morning, boys and girls. It is wonderful to see you on this beautiful Sunday morning, the 4th of July 2020 weekend. We hope that you're doing some things that are super fun. Already, you can see that I look a little different than usual on Sunday mornings. Um, I've already been on a nice, nice, warm, brisk walk. We are in Richmond, Virginia this morning. We're visiting some friends. Um, hopefully you're spending time this weekend doing some extra special things outside with people that you love as well. As always, it's great to see you. I love you dearly and I am forever proud of you. You can see that behind me is a beautiful expression or example of how Things in nature, things that God has created, work perfectly together. And that's one of the things we're talking about all morning this morning at Walker Chapel, because we're talking about the fact that we are celebrating Independence Day in our country. But the truth of the matter is, the way God has put and ordered our world together, God has ordered it so that we depend upon each other. We call that being interdependent of each other. So what I want to show you, and I hope you can see it well, I know you can probably hear the waterfall. This is a koi pond, and you may have seen koi before. They are a particular kind of fish, but you can hear the waterfall. And what the waterfall does in the koi pond is it provides oxygen so that the water and the air are healthy. And then in the koi pond, as you can see, there are plants and the plants help to filter the water so that it's nice and clean for the fish. And hopefully you'll, we'll be able to show you a shot of these koi fish in this pond are estimated to be 30 years old. And so one of the parts um, that the fish, the koi play in the koi pond, 
is that they eat up all the algae. They take, it's like they're a massive, uh, wonderful vacuum cleaner and they keep everything clean. And so I thought it was wonderful that we had this example this morning of thinking about how God has created in nature an example to show us how beautifully and wonderfully that God has gifted things so that we depend upon each other. So that's the lesson on this Independence Day weekend, is that God has made us um, because we need each other and we each have important roles to play um, in the systems where we live. And so on this July 4th weekend, what I hope you'll think about and talk with your families about is how or and what are the ways that you see all kinds of things working together in our world, especially ways in creation that God shows us. God says to God's people, I expect and I have planned that you will depend upon each other. That's the lesson for this morning. We hope that you continue to stay well and healthy and that you're having lots of fun and hopefully there are some good things that you're doing that are outside. I think you'll have some adventures to share with me the next time that we gather in person. But for now, let's have a prayer together. Dear God, dear God, thank you, thank you for giving us so many examples, for giving us so many examples of our need to depend upon each other, of our need to depend upon each other. In Jesus' name we pray, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I love you, see you next time. This morning's message story is an ancient story. It comes to us from the 24th chapter of Genesis. It is during the last chapter of Abraham's life. God has mightily blessed Abraham. And one of Abraham's last requests is to ask his senior servant, his senior assistant, the person in his life who takes care of all of his assets, we might say, all of his personal needs. Abraham has asked this servant to go back to Abraham's homeland and to find a spouse, a wife for his son Isaac. So when we enter this morning's story, the servant has already made it back to the homeland. He has encountered a beautiful, hospitable woman whose name is Rebecca. He is enthralled with her hospitality and as well as her beauty. And he's wondering if this particular family, this particular woman is indeed um, the plan uh, for Isaac and Abraham's life. Abraham and Isaac actually during this part of the story are grieving mightily for they have just lost um, Abraham's wife and Isaac's mother. And so as we begin our reading of the story, Laban, who is Rebekah's brother, has invited the servant back to the house, made all kinds of wonderful food, and then they have asked the servant to tell his story about how it is that he came to the, their homeland and is now um, in their home. So here we go in the 24th chapter of Genesis. Laban said, Go ahead and tell us. And the servant said, I'm the servant of Abraham. God has blessed my master. He's a great man. God has given him sheep and cattle, silver and gold, servants and maidservants, camels and donkeys. And then to top it off, Sarah, my master's wife, gave him a son in her old age, and he has passed everything on to his son. 
My master made me promise, don't get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites to whose land I live. No, go to my father's home, back to my family, and get a wife for my son there. Well, when I came this very day to the spring, I prayed, God, God of my master Abraham, make things turn out well in this task that I've been given. I'm standing at this well. When a young woman comes here to draw water and I say to her, please, will you give me a sip of water for your jug? And she says, not only will I give you a drink, but I will also water your camels. I think to myself, Oh, let that woman be the wife God has picked out for my master's son. I had barely finished offering this prayer when Rebecca arrived, her jug on her shoulder. She went to the spring and drew water, and I said, please, can I have a drink? She did not hesitate. She held out her jug and said, drink, and when you are finished, I will also water your camels. I drank and she watered the camels. I asked her, whose daughter are you? And she said, the daughter of Bethuel, whose parents were Nahor and Milcah. I gave her a ring for her nose, bracelets for her arms, and bowed in worship to God. I praised God, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me straight to the door of my master's family to get a wife for his son. Now. The servant says to Bethuel and Nahor, tell me what you're going to do. If you plan to respond with a generous yes, tell me. But if not, tell me plainly so that I can figure out what to do next. Laban, Rebekah's brother, and Bethuel answered, this is totally from God. We have no say in the matter, either yes or no. Now, my brothers and sisters, here's where the story takes an unusual turn. When it was time for the servant to go back to Abraham and to bring Rebecca, Rebecca's father and Rebecca's brother, in a very unusual way, said to the servant, Let's call Rebecca and let's ask her, does she want to go with you or not? And so the scriptures tell us they called Rebecca and asked her, do you want to go with this man? And she said, yes, I am ready to go. This is the word of God for the people of God. And may God teach us the meaning of God's word. Amen. The freedom to choose was limited. But Rebecca's family, ancient years ago, offered a most unusual response to the marriage proposal that was initiated by Abraham's servant. Rebecca's family, Bethuel her father and Laban her brother, offered their initial consent for her to be married to Isaac. But when the time came for Rebekah to leave her homeland and marry Abraham's son Isaac, they said to her, let's ask Rebekah, will you go with this man? And remarkably, for the time in which she lived, Rebekah was given the freedom to choose. Theologian Fiora Woolner says the freedom to choose is the cornerstone of how God relates to us. God has given us everything we see. Every leaf in nature, every drop of water, every animal we cherish, every human being that we love. God has gifted and then given us the freedom to choose what we do with the freedoms we've been given. 
God does not demand or use force over us ever. From the beginning, God has given us the freedom to choose. Karl Barth is widely regarded as the greatest Protestant Christian theologian of the 20th century. And among a myriad of things, Bart is often credited with saying that when we are discerning God's word, that we should hold both the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. Writer Leroy Seat explains that Bart understood God's word come that God's word comes to us in three different ways. God's word comes to us one through the humanity of Christ, the stories of what Jesus did, how he did what he did, the sayings of Jesus. Two through the words of the prophets and the apostles through the scriptures in the Old and New Testament. And three, Bart says, the word of God comes to us through the word of preachers. In a May 1963 Time Magazine article, Bart stated that he advised young theologians to take up your Bible and take up your newspaper, both, reading both thoroughly together alongside each other. The magazine also quoted Bart as saying, I always pray for the sick, the poor, journalist, authorities, leaders of the state and church in that order. Bart said journalists form public opinion and they hold terribly important positions. Now, you and I know that today the news and the work of the journalist is spread digitally as well as in print. So a newspaper today is defined by all the ways that the news is reported. During this strange and challenging time, I've been reading and watching more news than ever. During this raging and out of control pandemic, COVID-19, where hundreds of thousands of people have died, I've been reading and watching. During this time of the bursting open of a hideous history of white people and the ways that we have and continue to treat our brothers and sisters of color, I've been reading and watching and listening to more news than ever. Alongside reading the scriptures and discerning to the best I can God's word. Karl Barth believed that the challenge of the preacher is to interpret the Word of God so that we might be led in the direction of God's Spirit. So, reflecting July 4th, 2020, the holiday when Americans celebrate independence, the state of being independent, Here's what I've been reflecting upon. In all that we see that God has done in and through creation, there is nothing independent. Think about this with me, if you will. Every system that we know, our ecosystem, geopolitical systems, family systems, school systems, social systems, solar systems, the food chain, a massive system, and yes, even religious systems. Every system we know is interdependent, not independent. Interdependent, which means that we are always dependent upon depending on each other. There is always a good word if you and I 
make the choice to see the good in what God is calling us to do. I believe the good news this morning and in this strange and challenging season that is upon us, that God is depending upon us. Yes, you and me, ordinary people called to do extraordinary things. God is depending upon you and me through acts of faith to heal our land. I believe that God absolutely is overwhelmed with joy every time you and I choose with the freedom we have to act with care and compassion every time we lead others through simple acts of faith even through simple acts of careful spacing with others covering our faces all the ways that we are stretching and learning and being challenged by the systemic evils of our past. We are doing what we can to heal our land, choosing wisely to use the freedom that God has given us in the name of God, in the name of God's love. General and generous listening patience, mighty full prayer, radical acts of hospitality, using words that matter. These are the godly virtues of 2020. Speaking out in simple kinds of ways, the ways we help one another. I got to tell you, just a few days ago, I was at the Safeway around near our house, less than a mile or so. And I was making my way through the produce aisle and the gentleman who was busy stocking all of the shelves in the produce line had his face mask, but it was right here. Now, several weeks ago, I would have probably just hurried on by, but I mustered my courage and I said to him, would you please put your face covering up above your nose? And he looked at me and he said, yes, I will. Several weeks ago, I wouldn't have had the courage to stop and just say, would you please, in this careful, strange, challenging time, do what you can in this simple way to help protect others around you? Speaking out because words, using words that matter, can make the difference between life and death. And so I would encourage all of us, as we are thinking about what it means to choose and use the freedom that God has given us wisely in this particular time and space, who is it that God would have us to use important words? to speak words that matter to. Perhaps it's some grandchildren we have, or some nieces, some nephews, some neighbors that we see that are in need of a good word that reminds us that we depend, we are depending on each other. And in order to heal our land together, we must work together. We are in interdependent of each other and God has created us to depend on each other and so I would say to you my beloved Walker Chapel and friends beyond the chapel I'm depending on you and I hope that you're depending on me and so with the freedom that we have to choose let's recommit together to do the best we can, to the highest we know, to use the God-given freedom we have, to act in faith, caring compassionately and loving, because we are in this together and God is depending on us to care for each other. 
Amen. What? To that original group of folks from around the world that were asked the question, what is freedom? Upon deeper reflection, here are some of the responses about what is freedom. Freedom offers the possibility to do the worst kind of behavior and then learn from it and become gentler and kinder. kinder. Freedom is actually, upon deeper reflection, not that easy, is not without consequences. Freedom has responsibilities. Actually, there's physical, spiritual, mental, and financial freedom. And some experience some, some several, and some none at all. Some of us have freedom and some do not we start to realize we are quite privileged. 
once you are integrated into a society, you must remember that your freedom can negatively hurt someone else. But you can choose to use your freedom wisely. Good news, freedom is up to you. You get to choose. And so as we go forth from this place, giving thanks to God for the absolutely beautiful country that God has given us, for the many resources, for the many, many freedoms. With all that we are and all that we have, may we as God's people act faithfully, courageously, and boldly. We make this prayer in the name of God's Son, Jesus. Also remembering that this is an important week for lots of people in our community. One of our families is moving to a new home this week. A number of our families are grieving, awaiting decisions, important decisions. All of us are living into a new normal, and with that comes some stress and anxiety. There are lots of us who are in the midst of celebrating, in the midst of all that God gives us. We can, with the freedom we have, choose joy. And so as we ponder the good news and the joy of all that God has given us, from our house to yours, we pray for you. We love you dearly. And we make this prayer in the name of God, in the name of God's Son, Jesus, in the name of God's Holy Spirit. Amen, amen and amen. Mm -hmm.